faithful followers this is your old pal brother Jack Angry bringing you another wonderful edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem along with the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama and deep in the bowels of Omaha Nebraska as you can see unfortunately for this for tonight's show we're going it's going to be just brother Jack hosting things I mean Inferna uh, Lady Torrid brother James they've all are at work right now and uh, they've got other things that they've got to take care of, and I understand, you know, people people do have lives outside of the show, and they've they've all been really great with helping out and everything. So for tonight's show, it's going to be old brother Jack running things, and we'll start, we'll muddle through and soldier on and all of that, and try to have still have a good time anyway. Now tonight's movie, we're bringing you uh, one of our a rarely seen, rather undiscovered little gem. Uh, it's from our friends, you know, in the land of the rising sun, the home of really good sushi, you know, love hotels, and semi-pornographic anime, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. You know, the home of where little school, where little girls, not and not so little girls, walk around in Sailor Moon outfits, and no, I'm not talking about Comic-Con, um, it's Japan, people, get your mind out of the gutters, all right? You know, there's only enough room for Brother Jack. That's where his mind is, and, you know, there's only enough room for that. It's from the land of the rising sun, you know, home of cheap automobiles and really good electronics. You know, and there, and with that spirit in mind, we're bringing you a very rarely seen gem. Uh, it's one of our personal favorites. Uh, I remember watching this movie when I was just a uh, young and many, many years ago back on the East Coast. Yes, Brother Jack lived on the East Coast for a while, and it's like, you know, they all signed a petition telling me to get the fuck out, and that's how I ended up here. You know, isn't Omaha lucky? Yeah, well, we'll get into that some other time, and uh, by the way, up yours, you red-headed heck. You know, good luck with your little campaign to fund your TV show, and, you know, it's like, I was going to contribute a nickel, but... You know, I'd rather throw it in a wishing well. I'd figure I'd get a better return on my money than funding any piece of crap you could grind out. But, you know, the, Brother Jack's taking his anger management classes very seriously. But we're going to get back to, uh, but I digress. Tonight's movie is a rarely seen gem of Japanese horror, science fiction, you know, psychological drama, and some really good sailing shots, too. Uh, it's called Mantango. I said Mantango, not Mandango. We're not showing those kind of movies yet. But it's Mantango, also known as Attack of the Mushroom People. Now, this movie was filmed in, like, 1972, and it was... Oh, I'm sorry, yes, it was, uh, yes, it was filmed in 1972 in Japan. The, J the Japanese cast, some of the names I can't pronounce... But many of them were well-known television, um, film, and stage actors. Uh, the, uh, the whole pr premise of the film is basically a crew of uh, holiday sailors are shipwrecked on a deserted island somewhere off the coast of Japan or in the uh, Pacific Ocean. They never really were very specific. But in, th in the course of being shipwrecked, they come across an island full of these highly addictive wild mushrooms. And I know a few of you out there, are just if your ears have just perked up and you're going, shrooms? Addictive? Where? 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 You know, just calm down, you know, calm down. It's not that, well, it is that kind of mushroom. And what it does to the people in this movie, yeah, it's pretty addictive, I mean. But, you know, one bite, you're not only hooked, you're dead. You know, that's the way those mushrooms, I don't know how many Indians would want to be uh, eating these magic mushrooms, but, 
you know, to each his own, I guess. Brother Jack's not here to judge. Uh, the film, uh, basically this crew, they are arrive on this island, populated, you know, everything is covered with these giant mushrooms, and they're hearing this weird music, and one by one, they succumb to the allure of the mushroom, and as they begin partaking of the mushroom, they eventually become the mushroom. Well, that's a really nice definition of irony, but anyway, we're going to uh, leave it to you to find out about the magical mushrooms on this island with Mantango, Attack of the Mushroom People, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. Seven young people shipwrecked on a mysterious island. The island was deserted. Not even birds or animals dared to come here. What did they find? Hey! Hey! <coughs> Seaweed, fish, and turtle's eggs. Anything we can eat, as well as snakes and lizards. Just let me finish. There's a lot of grass growing around here. You can eat the roots. You can eat the roots of a lot of plants here. Never thought of that, did you? They were driven to the edge of starvation. Food was scarce, and they were forbidden to eat the mushrooms that grew on the island. Fear and hunger turned them against each other. <gasps> I'll kill you. The tango will help me live. I haven't been hungry since I left the ship. Maybe. Oh, help me. Help me. Please. Can't we eat the mushrooms now? That would really be the end of us. Akiko! Matongo, the horrible mushrooms. Matongo, the vegetable monster. Can they escape the dreaded Matongo? You'll find out when you see Matongo. Well, welcome back, faithful followers. What did you think of, uh, what do you think of Mantango, Attack of the Mushroom People? Isn't this movie scary? I mean, it's like the fungus, what can you say? The fungus is definitely among us in this film. I mean, I haven't seen that much fungus since the last time I went to the gym in the locker room, you know? Um, and if you've ever gone to any of the gym, you know what else people do in the locker room, and frankly, that's a little disgusting. I mean, helpful hint for all of you. If you're going to the gym, buy a pair of shower shoes to wear in the shower, in the locker room. Trust me, your feet will thank you later. You know, with that little uh, PSA, that public bit of public service out of the way, back to the review of, uh, back to Mantango, Attack of the Mushroom People. Now, this movie had some really interesting trivia to it. Um, the first little bit of, you know, horrible little bit of history in, in regards to this film. The film was nearly banned in Japan uh, right before it was released. The Japanese uh, film... Uh, censorship Commission, and yes, they did, believe it or not, they did have a film censorship commission. Japan wasn't the freewheeling place we know it to be now. I mean, there was a time they actually gave a shit about what they put out in front of the public as far as the movies, TVs. You know, they were a little bit, uh, even on the prudish side, I mean, this is a country whose main import is hentai, Ush uh, Usho Bijo and uh, anime, and if we've all, and we've, I'm sure we've all watched all three of those genres of Japanese entertainment, and let's face it, the hentai, well, we all know what that's about, and that goes over the top in a lot of, uh, in a lot of instance, you know, tentacles, um, you know, MILF, taboo, the whole thing, I mean, we've all seen Bible Black, believe me, you know, and for our friends out there in the uh, BDS&M community, you know what I'm talking about. So if you're not, if you're not 
Find a kinkster and ask them. They'll fill you in, trust me. Um, Japan, their censorship board uh, almost banned Mantango because of the makeup that they were, the way they had applied the makeup as people were turning into mushrooms was very reminiscent, I should say frighteningly reminiscent, of the wounds and injuries and the way people looked after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So uh, they, this was at a time when uh, Japan was still, you know, coming out of the Second World War. There was still a lot of, you know, there was, they were still a little raw about the war. I mean, you know, it was, it's like somebody said, it's all fun until somebody puts an eye out and then it's not fun anymore. And, you know, when we dropped an atomic bomb on two of their cities, you know, they kind of wanted to take their ball and go home, people. Um, but the film effects were very reminiscent of the injuries that many of the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki suffered. Um, you know, the lar large crusty burns and pus-filled whatever, and burnt just generalized nastiness. But all in all, their film department, their special effects and makeup department did a fantastic job. And many of that is, many of those techniques for the applications and for uh, the makeup and the special effects are still being used in some form today. So, you know, today's indie special effects companies, um, you know, we've got our good friend, uh, good friend of the show, Benito Garcia, who uh, his special effects company, I'm sure, probably uses some type of, you know, in some way, pays some homage to these techniques. And um, many of the big Hollywood companies still use techniques that they used on movies like Man Mantango and the Godzilla films and, you know, other um, Japanese monster films that we would regard as B-movies today, but for their time were considered state-of-the-art. Now, another, um, another great uh, little bit of trivia about the film, the, uh, the, you'll see the scene where the people are eating these really funky looking mushrooms and that was actually made out of those prop they were actually edible props that were made out of rice pastry now uh, the studio where, uh, where the studio filmed and I believe it was Tohai or to it wasn't Toho but it was Tohai Film Studios which at that time was the leading film producing studio in Japan. They produced, but they didn't produce much in the way of monster movies or horror movies or science fiction. They produced musicals, historical dramas, and religious p uh, pictures for uh, the Christian church, particularly the Catholic church, and for many of the Buddhist organizations. They would produce inf informative and, um, you know, inspirational and uplifting films. Let me see, what word am I thinking of to describe that? Oh yes, boring. Um, hey, to each his own, you know, I'm not here to judge. But I will anyway, because frankly I ain't got nothing better to do and everybody needs a hobby. Eh. But anyway, the, uh, the, the studio was located within a few blocks of a little uh, Japanese pastry shop and the actress uh, Mizuni Kumo, who I believe played the character of Mimi, the uh, hot little uh, fashion plate who later turns into a big fucking ugly mushroom. Boy, that's a letdown. Uh, anyway, she was very well liked in that district. Apparently she had family connections with this pastry shop or um, she was in some way familiar or knew the family that ran it. And out of, you know, because of the fact that she was actually shooting in a uh, the studio, which is fairly close to the shop, the shop would go that extra mile. They would not only they would uh, prepare the rice pastry um, and cook it, uh, but they would also add sugar and other spices and flavorings to make it more edible for the actors. So, if I mean, at least if, you're, it, if it doesn't taste like shit, you're not going to have to eat your... If you've got to do several takes and where you've got to eat these through several takes, at least it tasted good. And that was done out of, you know, the respect and admiration they have for Mizuni Kumo, a cute little Japanese actress. Um, you know, um, you know, Google her. I think she's still alive today. Um, Google her. Let me know what you find. Write us care of the show at that. That's Angry Bros. T-H-E-A-N-G-R-Y-B-R-O-S at, uh, at gmail.com. We'd like to hear what you find out. But anyway, um, the film, uh, there was also uh, the film, some more trivia in the film. Um, the makeup 
Well, there were several scenes that were cut from the original version, and they don't exist any longer, but that were, uh, that were very graphic as far as the transformation that, uh, you know, happened with people when they turned into the mushroom, and several large Japanese religious organizations complained very vociferously to the Film Censorship Commission, for they would say that it glorified uh, the demonic or supernatural or other, you know, un or other paranormal aspects, and they thought it wasn't good for the Japanese populace to be exposed to this, and, um, you know, and they lobbied quite, quite strenuously to get the film removed and never released. As a matter of fact, they wanted to have it burned. They wanted all the copies of the film, and at that time, I think there were like maybe 50 distribu distri distribution copies that went to theaters around Japan, because they didn't have many. I mean, the, the theater industry was really only starting to take off at the end of the war, and by the time Man Mantango was filmed, um, they didn't, they had mostly just little neighborhood theaters, and they had several large theaters in Tokyo, um, and, you know, Tokyo, Yokohama, and a few other of the larger cities had you know, at least one big theater or one really large venue, and they would have a copy of it. But they tried to get all of the copies burned, and they weren't, thank God they weren't successful, otherwise we wouldn't be watching this today. But, you know, I would love to get my hands on some of that footage if, if it was around there, but as far as my sources tell me, it doesn't exist any longer. But it was considered, it for the time, quite graphic, although today, with some of the things I've seen on special effects, probably wouldn't phase, you know, any of our spe local special effects gurus uh, or any of that, you know, but who knows. So we're going to get back to the film Mantango, Attack of the Mushroom People, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama. Enjoy. It's next, Toho Extravaganza. Matango, also known as the Attack of the Mushroom People, and my personal favorite, The Fungus of Terror, is one of the more unusual Japanese monster movies. I mean, all their movies are unusual, but this one especially. It doesn't have any giant dinosaurs, stomping cities, or anything like that, but I still wanted to talk about it. It's really more of a survival story, with a group of people shipwrecked on an uninhabited island. It starts out with a guy recounting the story from an insane asylum telling of how he and his friends went out pleasure boating one day and ended up on this lush but creepy island replete with a lot of mushrooms. They take shelter in a creepy old shipwreck, you gotta love the atmosphere on this, and soon begin to quarrel with one another. They steal each other's girlfriends and begin to eat the mushrooms before they're attacked by a severely disfigured man. They keep arguing but eventually learn the horrifying truth, that eating the mushrooms makes you a mushroom! <laughs> They're eventually overpowered by the terrible fungus, though one man gets away to tell us what happened. Oh yeah, and there's a twist at the end you probably saw it coming. It's a little more subtle this time around, just showing glimpses of the monsters out in the distance, building suspense like Jaws or Alien, until they attack in full force. Like I said, the atmosphere is just brilliant, with a slow, eerie pace to help set the mood. It is a little slow, and more about social commentary than most might care for. Still, if you're interested, give it a watch, you might not be disappointed. Welcome back, faithful followers. What did you think of Mentango, Attack of the Mushroom People? Wasn't that scary? Eh, Attack of the Mushroom People. I was waiting for, you know, like, the Mushroom People meet the Pepperoni People, who meet the Mozzarella Cheese People. Um, you know, and then we'd at least have the makings of a damn good pizza. You know, it's like mushroom, pepperoni, cheese, you know. All we need is, you know, the tomato sauce monster and we'd be in business. You know, um, just uh, another little bit of trivia that had escaped my mind in our last segment. The film, there was a scene in the film where people were, that were the way people were turning into mushrooms. That effect was later used in the 1973 Woody Allen film Sleeper uh, when they did the sequence where he is, um, Woody's character after being revived from cryogenic sleep in the 23rd century or whatever the hell it was. Uh, he, he gets this dish called instant pudding, and the way they did that is the same effect that they used in the movie Mantango Attack of the Mushroom People, and it was done like 10 years later. Um, 
well, actually, I, it was actually thought of like 10 years prior, but never really used. It was actually thought of in 1963. And I think that I said the, um, the mo uh, movie uh, Attack the Mushroom People was from 1973. No, it wasn't. I apologize. It was a faux pas on Brother Jack's part. You know, um, this is what happens when you drink when you, you're drinking when you try to uh, re research these films. You sometimes make mistakes, you know, go figure. Um, it was Mantango Attack of the Mushroom People was actually made in 1963, and that's where the effect was created, but it was used 10 years later for Woody Allen's Sleeper. So, okay, now we got that problem solved. Don't we all feel better? I know I do. Um, to give you a little more about the film, there was some really some some really great goofs, and they're, they were just so subtle and so kind of sneaky and insidious that you, unless you're really watching and you're knowing what you're looking for, and I had to go back and watch the movie several times to really see these things, but you can see them. Um, you will see the scene uh, where the, um, the after they, the boat has been shipwrecked on the island, you'll see a scene where the male lead chases Mimi, played by Mizuni Kumo, and one other uh, guy off the boat. Uh, you'll see him firing a gun at them as they're running down the uh, gangplank of the boat, but you will also see the, uh, the ricochet shots strike the ground around them, and then like about three or four seconds later, you'll hear the gunshots. They could never quite sync up the special effects of the gunshots with the sound, uh, with the sound effect. So that's just one of them cute little bits of trivia. Uh, and you know, when you see it, you'll go, hmm, by God, he was right. You know, Brother Jack, I mean, goes to painstaking lengths to research these movies. You know, and uh, he, so he likes to bring you the best experience possible as far as that. And we try to find as much little bits of interesting trivia and dirt as we can on these films. Now, you'll also notice that at the beginning of the film, at the beginning of the film, the uh, Kenji, the narrator of the film, who was one of the survivors, in fact, I think he was the only survivor of this doomed uh, party that went to the uh, mushroom island, as it were, and when he starts telling his story, his face looks pretty much perfectly normal. And as he goes through the thing, they will do a cut, a cutaway shot to him at the end of the movie, kind of a wrap-up. And he's got mushrooms growing out of his face. Now, whether that was intended or the, they had uh, scenes where, you know, why they, they did that, nobody knows. I mean, because he was never really actually exposed to the mushrooms. Um, and how they, that he ended up turning into one of the mushroom people, we don't know. But some people consider it a goof, some people consider it like, an, you know, that's why he was trying to tell his story before he turned into one of these giant mushrooms and was dead to humanity before he lost his humanity and couldn't tell the story. You know, it's a nice artistic device in any event, you know, nice plot twist at the end. I uh, used to see it a lot in some old DC comics like Ghosts and House of Mystery and all that all that happy horse shit, but those were some good comics. I mean, look for them at your local comic book shop. Ghosts and House of Mystery, two of my personal favorites. Um, but other than that, you know, as far as this film goes, we're going to give it like a three out of five on our, with our Reggie scale, three Reggies out of five. You know, it was a nice, it's a very a rare, undiscovered film. Not many horror hosts are playing it. You know, really, I, me and just maybe one or two others, you know, so you people in Omaha, if you're watching this on in Omaha, you're just going to see clips. So if you want to see the whole thing, you need to get a Roku box. That's another big thing that we wanted to talk about. You know, public access TV is great. Don't get me wrong. I have tons of respect for uh, all the great people at KPAO, the staff, the technicians, the people who put our show on the air. It's up to us to film the shows and make sure they get converted to the right formats and sent to uh, KPO so they can bring it to you. And all, judging by the cards and letters that we've received, you know, you people are watching it, you're digging it, you're loving the show, you're loving us, and we can't thank you all enough. Um, you know, unlike a certain other red-haired loser I could think about, and I won't name because, frankly, I'm not going to give his dumb ass any publicity, um, you know, and I'll leave it to you, for, to you to figure out who I'm talking about, but let's face it, you probably already know. Um, I'm not going to sit here and beg for money to fund, you know, to fund a show that is essentially going to talk down to the 
population of Omaha. I mean, I've got, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against families and children, but it's just what we, we are, we're not targeting that audience. I mean, hey, if you're a family and you want your kids to watch this show, you know, we understand, but, you know, we're not going to censor what we do. If you want your children to watch this show, it's going to be, this is adult humor, adult concepts, and if I had the girls with me, we would be kind of risque. I mean, we try to keep it within the bounds of, you know, at least common sense and semi-good taste, but where would the fun in that be if we did? You know, so we're just giving you fair warning, so consider yourselves warned. And if moms, dads, if you want to watch the show, we'd love to have you. Let's face it, it wasn't, El it wasn't the kids that made Elvira famous, it was their dads. And you all know what I'm talking about. Now, um... Oh, I digress. Roku, yes. Um, you know, we have nothing but love and respect, and the public access system has worked wonderfully for us, and we support it wholeheartedly. But let's face it, sometimes, because the, there are still federal regulations involved in what we can show you and what we can't, Roku is the answer, people. Roku, it's like the Wild West out there. I mean, Channels like Ultra Toxic TV, The Grindhouse Channel, Get Scared TV, um, a few others like uh, that we're not affiliated with but are out there, uh, like uh, INC and Cryptic TV, uh, all great channels, all of them. They bring, they breathe new life into the horror host and the horror host genre. And myself and our good friends Uncle Edward, the Toxic Zombie, Oliver from Oliver's Twist and Bargain Basement, Stoner Friendly, Freak Show. That's probably the closest I've got come to getting that right, Oliver, so you need to give me a call and say thank you. Uh, you know, you need to send me a cookie or something. But anyway, um, horror hosts like us, um, Miss Misery, um, you know, uh, we'd love to see more of our good friends there, like Dr. Destruction, you know, our good friends um, Tar and Feather uh, and others. There are certain horse, horror hosts we wouldn't want to see there and again, you know who you are and there's three of you and I've talk, I talk about one quite a bit. The other two are even less worth mentioning and um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, they've got a lot of people who they, who they claim are their friends, but I've heard a lot of things, other things, and um, a lot of new and up-and-coming horror hosts, our good friend Raven, um, Janet Decay, uh, you know, all could make use of Roku and the, the channel, Roku channels and the system it provides. It's a great way to be seen, people. Um, take my word for that, and if you've got any questions or you need any help, please get in touch with me. Um, just Google Angry Brothers Omaha, and it'll, um, there'll be a number of ways that you can get in touch with us. So with that being said, next week we're bringing you another great Japanese movie classic, The H-Men, uh, which I believe was called uh, Attack of the Liquid Monster or Attack of the Liquid Men. The title was kind of, the title that they used in Japan was a little more poetic and, you know, a little artsy, but uh, the, movie, the title that's used in the United States is The H-Men, and you're going to love it. Next week, The H-Men, and that's here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shock and Rama. So on behalf of myself, Brother Jack Angry, Brother James, Lady Torrid, Inferna, Gulia, um, Ash, Sin, Dr. Sangria, you know, Veronique, Dahlia, the whole gang here at the Monastery of Mayhem, Let's keep America on top. Watch horror hosts, y'all. Good night and unpleasant dreams.